Okay, so now we understand the envelope of the compressor, it helps us to visualize what the compressor is doing when we adjust the attack and the release. Okay, now here we can see a waveform of a kick drum being compressed. Okay, and with any sound, whether it's a kick, a snare, a synth, a guitar, a vocal, with any sound, all the attack emphasis is at the beginning of the sound on the leading edge here. Right? That's where all the attack and bite of a guitar note is. That's where the all the edge of the of a vocal word is, like baby, or the b b sound is on that leading edge there. The same with the smack of a snare. All the crack and attack of the snare is on that leading edge. Or with a kick drum, all the thump and click of the kick drum is on the leading edge here. And then what follows from about here onwards is the decay and the body. Yeah, the body and the decay of the sound tailing away. So all the attacking emphasis is on the leading edge of a sound here. Right? And there's the envelope of our compressor crushing the sound down to the new reduced level. Now if we have an ultra fast attack. As soon as the signal goes over threshold, the attack goes zoom, and drops the level to the new compressed level instantly. So our attack angle is a vertical line because we're getting instant attack. And it's so fast, it's crushing that leading edge before it can rise up. And that takes away all that leading edge emphasis and accent on the edge of the beginning of the sound. But if we increase the attack, make it a little bit slower and increase the attack time, we start to let some of that leading edge through and we start to get emphasis edge at the very attacking edge of the sound again. Increase the attack time a little bit longer, we get even more of that leading edge getting through before the compressor fully turns down. And increase the attack time even longer, we get even more of that leading edge getting through before the compressor fully turns down and gets the body and the decay of the sound compressed. All right. Now here I've got a kick drum. Right. There. Let's zoom in and look at one of those kicks. If we zoom in, there's the kick drum. Right. Now all the attack and the thump is at the beginning here. And then from about here onwards is the body and the decay of the kick. Right. So I'm going to start trimming away that beginning, taking away the attacking beginning part of the sound more and more and more. And you'll hear we lose more and more and more of that attacking thump as I take away the beginning. Right, so there's the, all the beginning. Good clicking thump. Trim it back, we start to lose some of that kicking thump. Right. Trim it back more, we lose even more and more. So that's at the beginning is where all the click and the thump and the attack emphasis of a sound is. Now we put the compressor on it. With a super fast attack, we're crushing that kick before it can even rise up. Like that. The compressor is just going vroom and turning down. So not even any of that leading edge can get through. And it's squished flat from the beginning all the way through. Like this. Super fast attack. Totally squashed flat. But turn up the attack, we let that edge through. We get more thumping emphasis at the beginning. Hear that? Yeah. Let some edge through. No edge through at all. It's, it's, it's compressing the instant, but the kick triggers. So no leading edge is allowed to get through. More leading edge getting through. We get more thumping attack. And more. And more. Yeah? It's the same with anything. Um, look, I've got a snare here. Okay. With instant attack, the snare's getting crushed at the very beginning before it can even rise up. And we get a sort of squished snare sound. Bring up the attack, we're letting some of that leading edge through. Get more edge emphasis at the beginning, right? And more, and more, yeah? Um, it's the same with the synth. I've got a synth sound here, right? With instant attack, it's crushed flat before it can even rise up. 
Okay, hear that? Turn up the attack, we're letting some of that edge through and we start to get accent at the edge beginning of the sound. So that's your attack. Okay, it's how fast the compressor turns down. Instant attack, you crush the beginning edge of the sound where all the accent edges before it can even rise up. Start to increase the attack, you're letting more and more and more of that attacking edge through, giving more emphasis at the edge beginning of the sound. If you made the attack too long, like say you made the attack so it didn't turn down till here, then all of the body following the attacking edge won't be compressed and you won't get the sound under control. But make it too short and you kill that leading edge completely and squish the sound flat. Now sometimes you might want to do that for, because that's the effect you're going for in terms of the sound. But generally speaking, you let a little bit of that edge through on a vocal, a guitar, a drum or whatever to give some accent edge. And then the compressor shuts down after letting some of that edge through to keep the body and then the decay of the sound under control. That is the attack, right? Now the release is a similar principle. Here we can see a kick drum and a, and a synthesizer together. Okay, I'll just play you that sound. Here it is. Okay, so kick and a synth together. Kick Here's the kick there, right? And there's the da 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 synth following it. Then there's the next kick and the da 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 synth following it. There's the next kick and the da 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 synth following it. Now we've got a fairly fast attack, not instant, so the kick drum edge is allowed to get through, giving us some thump. And then the compressor turns down to the new compressed level. But here we have a very fast release time. So the compressor between each kick the release is so fast the compressor is able to turn all the way back up before the next kick triggers it to turn down again the compressor here is triggered by the kick because it's the kick triggering the compressor not the synth that's playing behind the kick the kick triggers the compressor it turns the kick and the synth behind the kick it turns them both down but once that kick has passed the compressor goes well the kick's gone away now that was triggering me. I've got a very fast release. So whoop, I'll turn back up. And it turns back up in this gap between kick, kick, and kick. It's able to turn back up because it's short release. So as it turns back up in that gap, it turns up the synth following each kick here. So between each kick, 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 we hear the compressor turn back up in the gap going, Kick, you did it, kick, you did it, kick, you did it, surging up the synth in the gap, did it, did it, did it, did it, like that, like this. You hear that? You hear the synth coming up, up, up between each kick drum, like this, because the release is too short, right? So the so the compressor is able to turn back up before the next kick arrives, triggering it to turn down. And as it turns back up, it's turning up that synth following each kick. That's called pumping. Or breathing. But if we make the release longer, then what we're doing is this. We're making the release longer so it can't turn back up in that gap between each kick. The compressor, the kick here triggers the compressor, it turns down. The longer release holds that compression across the body of the kick and then the compressor is just starting to recover here where the synth bit is going da -da -da -da. the compressor is just starting to recover when the next kick arrives so the synth following each kick here is kept under control and we get the synth staying at the same level after each kick and we get a controlled sound like this <laughs> Yeah, the synth is at the same level, not surging up between the kicks, right? But again, just to show you again. But make the release too fast, and in between each kick, the compressor turns back up with that fast release time. 
it's not holding the compression yeah fast release turning up in between each kick bringing up the synth here here and here following each kick like this that's called pumping or breathing where it's the compressor surging up between each loud thing that's turning it down um, for example here I've got a drum kit okay now this is a drum kit a kick and a snare with a ride symbol behind it now here we've got a slow release a longer release time so the compressor is taking longer to turn back up kick snare kick kick snare and the ride symbol in between is kept under control because we have got a longer release like this so kick happens the compressor has a longer release it's just starting to turn back up when the next drum arrives and the ride symbol here isn't surged back up in that gap then the snare hits the compressor is triggered it's got a longer release so it's just starting to turn back up when the next loud drum arrives and the ride symbol here in the gap isn't surged back up and we get a controlled sound with the ride kept under control in the gaps between the kicks and snares at a good level relative to the kicks and snares that are a lot louder the ride maintains a solid level behind the kicks and snares it's not being surged up in the gaps and the ride is therefore the right level relative to the kicks and snares which are nice and louder like that but if we make the compressor release time short then the kick triggers the, the um, compression on this stereo kit of the ride and the kick and snare turns down the compressor but the fast release turns back up again after the kicks happened turning up the ride in the gap and then the snare arrives turns it all down again but then the fast release turns back up in the gap turning up the ride so look at this this one here where we've got the faster release turning up in the gaps between the snares and the kicks and look how loud the ride is being turned up turned up turned up turned up between each kick and snare we get you hear the ride in the background going <laughs> going up and down like that yeah because the ride is surging back up in the gaps between kick snare kick snare because the release is too fast so the compressor's turning back up in the gaps between the loud drums turning turning it down and as it comes back up the ride in between the kicks and snares is being turned back up so that thing where the release is too short and the compressor is turns back up between each thing that's turning it down that's called breathing or pumping and understanding the envelope helps us to visualize what's happening right in between each loud hit turn down turn up turn down turn up turn down turn up or with a synth turn down turn up turn down turn up yeah Right. but make our release time longer the compressor stays compressing and is just starting to turn up when the next kick or snare arrives and the ride isn't surged up in the gaps between right okay so there you go that's release and the thing about the release is is if you've got if you're compressing some program material where you've got regular loud bits triggering the compressor you want the release to be long enough that it isn't able to fully turn up in the gaps between the loud bits triggering the compressor that's the general rule but you can go for a pumping effect we all know pumping is part of music it's a technique right so you can use short release times to deliberately get pumping or breathing effects in between the loud bits turning the compressor down but that's a choice right so you generally you know with the compressor you're always just tuning the sound by ear there aren't any fast and hard rules there isn't a book that says right you've got an acoustic guitar being finger picked here right so you set the attack to that and the release to that you set the attack you understand what you're doing in terms of the envelope you know that with an instant attack you're going to kill the transient attack the rising up edge of that finger pick guitar before it can rise up and you'll get a squished sound with no attack emphasis on each pick of the guitar but turn up the attack time slower and slower and you're letting more of that edge through you want enough edge getting through to give accented 
edge at the beginning but not too long an attack otherwise it doesn't keep the body of the sound under control All right. now in the case of a finger picked guitar the release time doesn't want to be too short that the compressor can turn up between each pick so the release time you'll set it depending on how far apart in time each pick is if the player is playing ding 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 fast picks with hardly any gap between them then you won't need such a long release time but if it's a guitarist playing like with a plectrum ding 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 like that if the release is too short it'll go ding and turn down and then the guitar sound will come back up in the gaps between each pick so you just adjust the release time you want it just long enough that it's keeping the body of the sound under control before the next loud hit happens but not too long that it's holding the compression fully on when the next loud bit arrives okay so you just adjust the release and tune it by ear but you understand how it works with the envelope right and that's the whole point so there you go that's the attack and the release all right you should have them down um, and just finally I want to just explain something in case you're getting confused in all these examples where I show the compressor envelope attacking and squishing a sound down to the new reduced level set by the ratio and then turning back up right I'm only showing it on one side of the waveform a waveform has a positive and a negative edge from the center zero position so here the compressor is turning down to the new low level and turning back up but I'm just showing it on one side of the waveform in reality what's happening is this when the compressor turns down it's turning down both sides of the waveform squishing it to the new level and then turning back up both sides of the waveform like that but for all the examples I've only shown you the compressor envelope on one side of the waveform okay so just bear that in mind you know this is what's really happening the sound's getting squished at both sides positive and negative cycle and then turning back up on both sides when the release turns back up okay right and that's all the controls and how it all works inside in terms of the basics right so now we can move on and we can look at the techniques we can do with the compressor like side chaining and stuff like that